Good morning. <clears throat> Today's session is for business communication, that is MMPC 007. And today we will be discussing about block two and three, which includes unit seven, eight, nine. So we will start with unit seven, that is communication in meetings. First of all, we will see what meeting is all about. A meeting is a group communication in action around a defined agenda at a set time for an established duration. Meetings can occur face to face, but post COVID business houses and the industries are turning to video conferencing as it saves cost and time of travel. Regardless of how you come together as a team, group, or committee, you will need to define your purpose in advance with an agenda. What are the objectives of meetings that are common? That is sharing information, improving productivity, resolving communication gaps, addressing the concerns of employees, forming policies, clearing doubts, addressing staff grievances, obtaining feedback. Now we will see what are the different types of meetings. Meetings are purpose intensive activities. They can be daily meeting. Also known as stand up meeting is a gathering of people who work on the same project with a common goal and make decisions informally by journal agreement. The weekly or monthly meetings where members work on different but parallel projects and when there is a competitive element and a greater likelihood that the chairperson will make the final decision. Occasion, occasional, infrequent or special project meetings are composed of people whose normal jobs do not bring them together and whose work has little or no relationship to the others. First of these three types of meetings, workforce type, is probably the most common. Surprisingly, it is also the most likely to succeed. Operational impractice usually ensure that it is brief and the participants' previous experience of working together ensures that communication is good. The meeting can be classified based on the focus area. These can be status update meetings, decision meetings, planning meetings, collaboration meetings, problem solving meetings, brainstorming meetings, team building meetings, debrief meetings, and innovation meetings. As from the name itself, the time of the meeting can be accessed. The status update meetings basically they focus area of such meeting is desirability. Usually the stand-up meetings or weekly, monthly meetings fall under this category. The second one is decision-making meeting. The focus of such meeting is trying to find out the flaws, defects in the decision-making process. Planning meeting, as the name suggests, these meetings are based on the plan of action. That is what, when, how, 
where a particular decision is to be made and implemented. Collaboration meeting. The focus of these meetings is trying to achieve a mutual goal. Problem solving meetings. The focus of these meetings is to analyze the cause of the problem and try to resolve the issues. These are conveyed usually during emergencies when a situation needs a solution. Brainstorming meetings. Such meetings are informal in nature and have a friendly atmosphere. In such meetings, every participant feels that he or she can contribute even though the idea may not work. Team building meetings, these, the focus of these meetings is to create an atmosphere where people come together as a team. The concern of each other and caring attitude is developed. Debrief meetings, the focus of these meetings is on the future of the organization through information sharing. These are also known as feedback meetings. Innovation meetings in the present day scenario, which is complex, dynamic and competitive, such meetings have become all the more important. Every meeting has its importance and forms a major part of communication, thereby helping the organizations to sustain in the competitive world. Meeting preparation, the ability to work and communicate effectively in groups is a skill. How you perform in meetings provide a cue to how competent you are and you how ready you are to assume responsibility, work in teams and solve problems. Meetings can have one or more purposes, which may be to review progress, assign responsibilities, this is a meeting, etc. A large part of what makes a meeting successful occurs in the preparation phase. Poor planning and mismanagement may turn meetings into a waste of time. Hence, pre-preparation can help participants make the best possible use of everyone's time. Although meetings differ by department or unit, there are seven key accountabilities expected of chairs or team leaders before a meeting takes place. They are clarity of purpose and aim. Every meeting is called with a purpose. A clearly stated purpose highlights the key decisions that must be made or action that must occur at the meeting. The purpose of meeting should be stated at the top of the meeting agenda at least two days before the meeting. The purpose should be specific and to the point, like identify priority goals for next year, examine and update product launch criteria, decide how to promote a certain product. Second one is create an agenda. Effective meetings are disciplined and to have a disciplined meeting, a well-prepared agenda is a must. It is like a roadmap or a blueprint. It helps focus the group work towards achieving desired outcomes at a specific time. Good agenda items provide focus and structure for a meeting. Schedule the meeting. Making a list of attendees is only a part of the process while planning a meeting. From the time of approaching attendees for seeking their availability until scheduling a meeting, calendars can fill up quickly. To reduce turnaround time, it is advisable doing some pre-work. It necessitates selecting essential people who must attend. When asking for meeting times, try to be as clear and concise as possible, eliminating any ambiguity or assumptions. A meeting site can be chosen once an ideal day and time have been agreed upon. A grid can be prepared Establish at what time the meeting will begin and end. If the meetings are long, include a short 10 to 15 minutes break in between. Fourth one is share agenda. Distributing the agenda ahead of time helps participants to prepare questions and formulate opinions. There are legal bindings too for posting meetings agenda on time. Circulate additional information. 
provide enough information before meeting so that people come with a general familiarity with the issues to be discussed in the meeting. It will be a good idea to share URLs if possible. Minutes of the meeting. Secretary is responsible for preparing the minutes of the meeting. In short, we call it as M1. Minutes are a formal record of what was discussed in the meeting. It has to be transcribed and circulated to each member soon after the meeting ends. Often the draft of the meeting minutes is circulated to all participants for their inputs before finalizing. Sixth one is location. Ensure that the room location is complementing the kind of environment you prefer for the meeting. Rooms arrangements can make a big difference in how well a meeting goes or does not go. Most important is that participants can see and hear each other clearly. Minutes are formal documents and they should be written mm -hmm. in formal style. The tone used in writing minutes should be neutral. It demands a high level of accuracy, objectivity and concreteness. To maintain an impersonal neutral tone and maintain objectivity, minutes are written in past tense and passive voice. Minutes use reporting words like said, stated, illustrated, explained, suggested, etc. To conclude the minutes of the meeting are important documents and a high degree of seriousness is required while drafting them. Then the features of productive meeting. The first step to make your organization productive begins with effective meetings. The key to making the most of the time spent in meeting is ensuring that all meetings adhere to six core principles. Number one, meeting should have a leader. By leader, we do not mean a boss or a senior person in the organization. Any person who calls the meeting should generally be the meeting chair or a leader. Second one is purpose should be well defined. It is important for the chair of the meeting to have a clear idea of what outputs he or she is expecting from the meeting. It is point possible to get a good outcome if you are yourself not sure about what outcomes you want. It is a good practice if the leader articulates the goal of the meeting in the beginning. Well-defined agenda. Each meeting should have pre-decided agenda items created by the meeting leader and sent out at least 24 hours before the meeting. Each item should have a time for discussion mentioned clearly in the agenda. This helps keep meetings structured and disciplined. Time management. Research states that people hate long meetings. When it comes to scheduling a meeting, it is better to go short than long. This can be done by assigning the time limit to each agenda beforehand. Participants should come prepared. Each agenda item has a person designed who is responsible to carry out the discussion. It is important that the persons respond, responsible should come prepared. The sixth one is leaders should be a moderator. Meetings are criticized for losing focus. People start checking their mobile phones, emails, etc. Start talking with each other or even bring the discussion out of the track by talking on irrelevant issues. What are the features of successful meeting? Time plays an important role. Start and end the meetings on time. Remember, all opinions are valid. Avoid side conversations. Do not encourage anything unrelated to the agenda. Avoid commotions. Issues discussed should remain in the room, that is, maintaining the confidentiality of the issues discussed. Now we will talk about input process output IPO model. Meetings can be termed as a form of group communication. They are most effective way for sharing the information between the members. Input process output theory starts with the member circulating the ideas to achieve desired outcomes. It has the following features. First one, meeting IPO, that is input process output, is a structured approach 
to ensure meetings are productive and useful. IPO follows a straightforward process that begins with the desired outcomes, then moves into the process that will be used to accomplish them, and finally to the inputs for each process step. By making the desired outcomes and process visible, IPO improves meeting engagements and create clarity, alignment, and results. Now, how to create an IPO model? Each step in IPO model has its own importance, where members communicate with each other to decide the perception of the group. The IPO model is considered to be a cybernetic system, which means it is a closed circuit. IPO model starts with setting goals, then brainstorming to develop the inputs to achieve those goals. Input. This input involves sharing of information and brainstorming to achieve the outputs. Processes to identify the objectives which are to be achieved and the means to achieve those objectives. And the output is, this involves the response for making decisions and how they can be implemented to achieve the outcomes. Meeting etiquettes. Meeting place you in front of employees and employees with whom you may not work on a regular basis. As a result, how one acts in the meeting should create a lasting impression. 10 meeting etiquettes one should know. Be on time. To avoid wasting the time of yourself and others, make sure you come on time. It is beneficial to come prepared for the meeting ahead of time. Make introductions. To know each other, to let others know you. It is a good tradition to begin a meeting by introducing each member to the team. It should always start by introducing the person of the highest rank first. Have a strong agenda. Strong agenda helps to keep the discussion on track. It is the facilitator's responsibility to get the decision back on track if it gets off track for any cause. Sit appropriately. The way you sit in the meeting helps you to get involved and heard. Speaker, meetings are called to hear your opinions on issues. Do not sit quietly. Add your thoughts related to the topics being discussed and contribute qualitatively. Understand the unwritten speaking rules. Some rules are universal. You may disagree with people, but rude and aggressive interactions may damage your life. Learn to interrupt politely. Do not take phone calls during the meeting. It is a very good manner. Very, uh, it is a very bad manner to talk to the phone whilst others are discussing something important. If the call is urgent, make an excuse and leave the room. Do not drink and eat during the meeting. It is okay to eat or drink during the meeting if it is served to everyone. Avoid eating and drinking personal stuffs as it may make noise or give off smells that are destructive. Clean up after yourself. It is an unprofessional to leave the place dirty after yourself. Do not save all your questions for the end. As ask your questions at the appropriate time. Keeping all the questions for the end may make others uneasy as they might like to end the meeting on time. Effective decision making in group communication. Every organization's growth is driven by the ability of management to make effective decisions. The quality of decisions depends largely on the efficacy of communication within the organization. For decision making, meetings are held at various levels in the organization. Hence, communication plays an important role in reaching an effective decision. Small group communications refers to the act of communication among three or more people for a common goal or purpose. They are used in different settings such as work group, social events or influence groups. Small group communication is an essential part of group decision making and meetings are a way in which group communication works. 
In terms of business communication, small groups are limited to achieving a subject specific objective. Small groups fulfill three different needs of an individual, such as instrumental, interpersonal, and identity needs. Functional theory of communication. The functional theory, also called the functional theory of group communication, is a set of statements, beliefs, and claims that attempts to explain how and why communication affects the quality of decision made by a group. If it explains how communication influences group decision making and how communication should be structured to make better decisions. In 1910, John Davy proposed a method for some problem solving in his book, How We Think. He suggested that reflective thinking is the key to solving a problem and gave five steps which are finding the difficulty or problem, where and what is the problem, proposing possible solutions, determining the consequences of the solution by reasoning and implication. Accepting or rejecting a solution by experimenting or observing them. The second influence was of Robert Bale in his work Interaction Process Analysis, that is IPA, and he stated that small group communication is influenced by the ability of group members to deal with functional problems. He identified four functional problems, which are adaption instrumental control, expression, and integration. Adaption and instrumental controls relate to the decision making term as task concerns, whereas expression and integration relates to the management of relationship term as social emotional concerns. In IPA, he highlighted 12 categories out of which six were related to task functions that is decision making and the others were related to socio-emotional concerns. In light of these practices, communication plays three different roles in group communication, positive, disruptive, and counter. Each of these roles is defined as positive role is the group is able to complete the functional requirements successfully. Disruptive role, it serves to create roadblocks that obstructs or prevent the group from meeting any of the requirements for effective decision making. The third one is counteractive role. It serves to nullify or neutralize a communicative act that has a disruptive aspect. Now we move on to unit A, which is related to presentation skills. Presentation skills and art it is an important mode of oral communication. This requires more focus and attention while presenting an idea or a concept. Presentation are a way of communicating ideas and information to a group. The objective of communication is to make your message understood and remembered. In order to be effective and impressive in your presentation, you need to prepare before you actually deliver. Most presentations either inform the audience about something or try to persuade the audience about a product, service, an idea or a concept. These days, presentations have also become an important part of the recruitment process in business organizations. Perhaps this is the because the job market has become so competitive that job interviewers are not enough for organizations to gauge the skills of their applicants. Therefore, in any organization, the shortlisted applicants are asked to make presentations before the selection panel. Through presentations, the interviewers get an opportunity to look at the ability of the applicants to identify and organize appropriate material on a specific topic, as well as to support and illustrate ideas. In brief, the purpose of presentation is to introduce a new product or service, to present a new business plan, to make a product or increase sales of it, 
product to give a talk in a seminar or a conference to give information on any issue to analyze a report or project or to display oneself in an interview what are the types of presentations based on the purpose for which the presentation is being made they can be divided into the following categories we start with informative presentation as the name suggests this type of presentation gives information to the audience this information can be in the form of details of rules and regulations or policies of the organization it also includes giving information to the employees the media and the public persuasive presentation this kind is general generally about selling something it intends to convince the audience about the goodness of a product or action this kind of presentation can also persuade the organizational heads to accept proposals of any issues third one is motivational presentation they can they are designed to motivate or enthusiasm people on an issue or about a program generally this kind of presentation is made to influence people to accept a new policy initiative or idea of the organization for a presentation to be effective the presenter not only has to be make his or presentation interesting and relevant he or she also has to prepare himself or herself to have to make an effective presentation some of the things one needs to keep in mind to make the presentation effective are coping with fear or nervousness understanding the audience and connecting with them making the presentation relevant and interesting for the audience confidently handling the question answer sessions now what about the planning the presentation is done planning a presentation requires a lot of preparation before it takes a final shape depending on the focus of the presentation you decide the strategy or sequences of ideas one of the most common and effective strategies used by most people is the star strategy for planning a presentation according to this strategy the presentation needs to go through five filters of who why where when and what before it takes a final shape these five filters helps to polish and chisel the presentation before it is ready for the audience first target audience that is who this is the first filter which helps the speaker to understand his or her audience checklist can be followed to assess the target audience educational background nature of job profile basic attitudes common language and number of people attending purpose why this is a second filter which looks at the reasons for making a presentation the following questions need to be answered when trying to focus on why aspect these are end results and objective need of the audience when the purpose is defined the speaker may start the presentation giving a general background of the subject or straight away moving to the specialized part of the subject usually the purpose of any presentation is to presenting a new point of view additional information demonstration of a service product or a system or selling a concept or idea third one is place where the third filter is to place or location of the presentation this is important for the speaker as it will help him or her to understand the ambience sitting arrangement sound system etc if the speaker knows the where of the presentation he or she will make himself herself comfortable before taking the presentation fourth one is time that is when the next part is to know the time of the presentation this includes for how long the presentation will run the answers 
the following queries are time available, time is taken to complete formalities, time available for question and answer sessions. First one is content. What? This is the most important part of the presentation. As a wrong choice of the subject matter may result in the presentation going wrong, even if the presentation has been prepared nicely. The purpose. What is the process of presentation? Every presentation follows a classical pattern of introduction, body, and conclusion. These three are essential components for making a presentation. A presenter should carefully prepare each one of these in order to make an effective presentation. To start with the introduction, this part is the first step while preparing for a presentation. Introduction should be such that it builds the inclusiveness and the interest of the target audience, which will make an impact for the course of action. The following point should be kept in mind while preparing for the introduction. Introduce yourself, state your purpose, relate subject to the audience, and give a brief outline. An introduction to the presentation needs to be imaginative and interesting to capture the attention of the audience. A good introduction will motivate the audience to sit through the entire presentation. Body. This is the middle part of the presentation. In this part, the main content of the theme is developed, which should be precise so that attention of the target audience is retained. This part should focus on the following points. Do not present more than four points or ideas. Support the main, main ideas with facts, use signposting, and use visuals. The last part is the conclusion. This is the last part of the presentation. This part summarizes the whole concept of the presentation and also gives the future scope of the topic considered. This part consists of the following points. Reiterate, reinforce what you have said. Summarize main points. Do not present new ideas. Make a conclusion or recommendations if necessary and relate conclusions to the audience. And last, invite questions. Use of virtual aids. Most presentations deals with statistics and other complex data, which would be confusing if it were described in words without any visual support. It is here that visual comes to us rescue. They help us to present figures, to make a comparison, and contrast to project future performance and to talk about past, present, and future trends, thus serving the dual purpose of the enabling the presenter to deal with this kind of information easily and making it possible for listeners to understand them clearly. A variety of visual skills like flowcharts, line graphs, bar graphs, pie charts, pictogram maps, tables, diagrams, photographs, etc. can be used for this purpose. Visual aids also make our presentation more interesting. Moreover, they help you to cut down on the amount of talking one has to do. Glossophobia. Phobia is termed as fear. Glossophobia is a fear of speaking in public. The one who suffers from glossophobia often suffers from fear and anxiety, especially while speaking in front of a group of people. This makes them to avoid public speaking and it is important for an organization to diagnose the cause and provide remedial solution to the employees suffering from glossophobia. How to overcome glossophobia? Most of us, even those who have reached the highest outcomes of their professional struggle with public speaking anxiety. Nervousness or anxiety in certain situations is normal and public speaking is no exception. Certain tips should help a person to become a good public speaker. And these are, number one, get organized. Ahead of time, carefully plan out the information you want to present 
including any props or audio visual aids. Second one is knowledge of the topic. The better you know about the content of your presentation, the less likely you will make a mistake or get off track. Third one is practice. Practice your complete presentation several times. Next one is challenge specific worries. When you are afraid of something, you may overestimate the likelihood of bad things happening. Visualize success. Imagine that your presentation is going well. Positive thoughts will help decrease some of your anxiety. Deep breathing. This can be very common. Take two or more deep breaths slowly before you get up to the podium. Focus on presentations. People mainly pay attention to new information. They may not notice your nervousness. If the audience does not notice that you are nervous, you are likely to be sympathetic and want your present to be a success. Do not fear a moment of silence. If you lose track of what you are saying or start to feel nervous and your mind goes blank, it may seem that like you have been silent for an components of effective presentation. To make effective presentation, one should try to capture the interest of his or her audience right from the beginning by asking rhetorical questions, telling an interesting story, quotations or joke, relating what you are saying to the audience, using illustrations, eye contact and body language. Making a connect. The few few minutes of uh, the presentation are very precious and crucial. If you fail to arrest the attention of your audience in the beginning, you may lose it forever. You make your first impression even before you have opened your mouth to speak. Your dress needs to be neat, smart and appropriate on to the occasion. It is most formal for presentations. The next thing to pay attention to would be your gait and posture. Your body communicates different impressions to the audience. People not only listen to you, they also watch you. Displaying good postures tells your audience that you know what you are doing and you care deeply about it. The key is to look relaxed and comfortable and at ease with your surroundings. Reaching the venue of your presentation well in time should be immensely helpful in getting you comfortable with the place. Eye contact is another crucial factor. It signals interest in others and helps you to connect with the audience. The audience responds to you better when you look at them in their eyes. Do not keep your eyes away from the audience for too long. The expressions you wear on your face transmits a great deal. A smile is contagious. A smile spreads happiness around you as it makes other smiles in response. It also transmits happiness, friendliness, warmth, liking and positivity. Second one is your language focus. Language focus puts the emphasis on the structure of the language which is being used in the presentation. One should carefully use the phrases while talking about visuals and making comparisons. While introducing a visual in the presentation, one can use the following. First of all, let us look at. Here we can see, as you can see in the graphs or tables, and while talking or explaining the visuals or analyzing this graph, what is interesting in this graph? It is evident from this diagram. This visuals clearly indicate these are the words which has to be used. Some useful phrases which one can use to conclude his or her presentation or to give recommendations at the end of the presentation are, I would like to summarize or sum up. At this stage, I would like to run through over the main points. So as we have seen today, but these are the concluding remarks. Third one is body language. Facial expression is a fundamental contributor 
to affective communication. The scientific study of our body language is called analysis. Proper posture is also important for good communication. Leaning backwards, swinging the legs, resting the head backwards in a reclining chair or swimming too frequently or playfully should be avoided. Silence is a uh, powerful if in giving medium of communication. Silence can have a dramatic effect in presentations or speeches to draw the attention of everyone, those who are chatting quietly or even napping. If it is not used appropriately, it is open to misinterpretation as lack of preparation on the part of the speaker. Therefore, Silence can be appropriate or inappropriate depending upon the situation. Here are some tips to make an effective presentation. Dress appropriately for the occasion. Hold the attention of the audience by using visuals and audio clips to break the monotony. Be clear and concise. Ideas and information should be sequenced well. Use of humor in the presentation. Familiarize yourself with the venue. Be punctual. Maintain eye contact with the audience. Have positive body language, enthusiasm, confidence, and sincerity. Now, move on to block three, which is written communication at work. First of all, we'll see what are the basics of written business communication. Writing is essentially a communication tool that is used to convey emotions or exchange information. If you have used this tool to talk to your friends, colleagues and family, you are already a writer. However, in order to be a good writer, you need to read good models of writing, have knowledge about writing and above all, you need to practice constantly. What is the need for written communication? We observe and process a vast amount of information that we get from the world around us. If we document these reactions and observations regularly, we create records of our personal history. Writing is thus an important tool for documentation. Since we are connected by online networks, which demand constant communication, we are expected to write concise and clear texts. All professional places now demand strong writing skills from their employees and it is important ingredient for upward mobility. We write the following reasons, write to experience. People who, make fo who take photographs have often talked about the importance of capturing the beauty of the moment. Write to think. As humans, we are constantly inundated with thoughts about our daily lives, ambitious and insecurities. To make careful choices and decisions, we must express what we think. Right to create, words have the power to carry inspiring messages. There is a reason why we remember great novelists, thinkers and scientists and find wisdom in what they say. Right to learn. Writing can help us remember what we read and study. When we talk, we take notes. We learn to record and analyze information. This is one of the important part of the businesses. As you are probably aware, writing helps you to develop many skills which are helpful for your academic life as well as for your work life. Writing helps in communicating one's idea and thoughts. What are the features of written communication? To be an effective communicator, one must adhere to the following characteristics of writing. Extensive reading. Reading extensively will enable you to become a better writer. In personal as well as professional life, in reading, habit helps in developing better communication skills. Constant writing. One of the best ways to become a good writer is by constantly writing. Practice 
makes writing more profound and the words that flow have more clarity. One precise word seeker. Good vocabulary helps in placing the appropriate words while writing, which can help in transmitting the message with more clarity. What is the purpose of writing? It is very important to be aware of the purpose for which you are writing and have knowledge of who your readers are. This will make your writing more focused and precise. Target audience. Remember, most writing is meant to be read by others. In the business world, the audience is quite specific and communication to the employer or other stakeholders is made through emails, memos, reports, etc. or a job application. Understanding of the subject. The next step is to attempt to understand your subject or topic or what you are writing. Remember, writing is not something you do after thinking, but it is something which helps you to think. What is the process of writing? Writing is a complex process which involves thinking and composing texts. When we write, we have ideas and these ideas come to us as words or phrases. These words or phrases are then logically placed in a sentence, which are then combined to form a paragraph. Ultimately, paragraphs are put together to form a coherent text. Though the process of creating a text may vary from person to person and text type to text type, there are a few basic steps that can help us demystify this process. Writers therefore plan and then revise their plan, draft and then revise their draft, write and then rewrite. This is known as the process approach to writing and it is important to follow such an approach. Step one, understanding your reader, who is it for or whom we are writing. Before one begins the process of writing, it is important to identify the reader. Is the reader your boss or are you writing a project proposal for venture capitalists? Either way, knowing the reader is the first step in the writing process. One, once you identify the reader, the next step is to develop a profile of the reader. Are you writing for a digital audience? If yes, you may consider keeping the length of your text short. Creating a reader's profile. The following list of questions can help you to create a reader's profile. Who is my reader? Am I addressing one person? or am I addressing a diverse group of individuals? Are they familiar with what I say? If not, then what should I tell them so that they follow what I write? What do you already know? And one is, why should they be interested in what I say? Fourth, what is the best way to communicate? Fifth, should I use a particular structure, tone or style when I communicate? What gems should I use? What will be they gain after my reading? Second step is finding the purpose. What is your intent? Know that you are aware of your audience. It is time to identify the purpose behind your writing exercise. You need to do that to ensure the following. Your audience will understand what you are writing about and why it is important to you and to them. You will understand why you, your superiors and your organizations need to know about the subject. You will be able to identify and gather the information that is most relevant to your readers and to and your goals. Third step is starting the writing process. Sometimes when we sit to write, you may feel the need to discuss everything under the sun about the topic that we choose. Or when we get struck and cannot write at all, in, your, in such situations, it is always good to start writing. Ideas, if you have noticed, gain coherence and clarity when you put them down on paper your proposed topic. Identify credible source. Now that you have an overview about your topic, 
it is important to identify reliable information. Who is the writer? Are they qualified to write about the topic? Where is the information from? Is the website a reliable source? Then comes library research. A few decades back, libraries were the primary source of information. While the internet has helped us to find information at record speed, it can also not have the right answer for some of your queries. Organize and label your research. Research can thoroughly overwhelm you if you do not organize the information that you have. When you collect information through internet or library research, organize them into folders and label them correctly. Step five is writing a plan. After the free writing, what you do, it is important to write an outline. This may be points and remember these points will be changed if required. In fact, your plan must be dynamic and flexible. Mind maps. Sometimes visualizing what you have in mind can help you to understand your ideas better. Visual tools like mind maps can be used to capture your initial ideas. Creating a mind map. Mind maps can be created using the combination of colors, coding, short text, doodles, short phrases, division of knowledge or information, etc. to make it an effective and active tool of communication. You can see over here how a business plan can be thought for. It may include your executive summary, overview of organizations, IT, marketing strategy, product and services offered, logistics, human resource, financial resources, organizational structures. This is what all comes into the mind when we talk about business plan. Step seven is structuring how to outline. An outline prepares the skeleton structure of your writing. Since you have brainstormed and uh, researched on your topic, you have a vast amount of information in your head. Therefore, it is good to create an outline that can help you organize the information logically. Next step, step eight is putting it on paper. How to write? To write, we must sit at a desk and to write to meet our deadlines. This means that we must push our brains to construct coherent sentences, paragraphs, and text when we write. Reworking the craft, how to revise. The act of writing is incomplete without the act of reading and revising. To write is also read and then rewrite what we write. Usually, what you write in your first draft may be messy. It could be tangled bunch of ideas and half formed thoughts you communicated on paper at one go. This means that you must return to your draft and clean the copy before it goes to the reader. Do remember that revising is not the same as editing. When you revise, you can even change the whole draft and start afresh. Though editing is a part of revision process, it does not involve large scale changes to the draft. So when you sit to work on writing a project, do ensure that you have set enough and more time for revisions. Step 10 is integrating feedback, how to collaborate. Most people believe that writing your personal project. While this may be true to some extent, good writing emerges from collaboration and feedback. To understand this, you should consider asking a friend or colleague to read your draft. Constructive feedback can do wonders to your draft. It will improve the reading experience of your draft and make you confident about your writing. Step 11 is polishing the draft. How to edit and proofread. Editing and proofreading are the final steps of the writing process. They make our writing effective and error-free. Though editing and proofreading are linked to each other, they are different in terms of their functions. Editing, for example, can be a part for revising process. While we are rereading the draft, we may add it for clarify, clarity, 
as we make revisions. Proofreadings, on the other hand, only emerges with error correction. The following steps can help you with your editing process. Read your writing aloud. Check and remove repetitions. Find and fix common mistakes. Clarity. Use active voice and ensures uniformity in the use of tenses. The following steps can help you with your proofreading process. Read one sentence at a time. Read the paper aloud. Common punctuation errors such as the use of commas and apostrophes can also be rectified during proofreading. Finally, to ensure that there is no mistake, you can also consider sharing your writing with your friends and asking them to proofread.